Hey my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great. I'm excited to do our vlog today because we are going to talk about a historic circus family and we're starting it here in Sarasota, Florida. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. And I decided to start it here right on Ringling Boulevard because you can see at the Robarts Arena right up here up top you can see all the notable trapeze acts and things that you would see at the circus and our topic today are the Walendas are kind of memorialized right there and they got their big break here from the Ringling Brothers Circus and I just thought what a cool mural to take a look at we're going to be going to a couple of places today. So the head of this famed circus group, the family, was Carl Walenda. And Carl Walenda's parents were both in this circus when he was a little kid. So he learned to be around that. His father was a trapeze act and his mother walked the high rope or the high wire tight rope. And he eventually became a hand balancer. He would hand balance on tables for money. And in 1921, he needed a job and responded to an ad for a circus job where he was supposed to do that. He showed up and what they actually wanted him to do was to hand balance on a man who was doing a handstand's feet while they were three stories high on a high wire. And he didn't want to do it, but he didn't have the money for his bus ticket home. so. He ended up having to do it and ended up conquering his fears and came up with the idea of putting together his own group and he would do this Walenda Four where he and his brother Herman, another man, and what they would do is get a beautiful woman to put on top and what they would do is they would have two people with balance rods that were about 30 pounds on the bottom, one person on top and then a woman on top of that sitting on a chair and they would walk across the wire and then she would get on top of the chair and that was the act. And they took it around Europe because he was from Germany and he just didn't feel he was getting the proper response. So when they had an offer to go to Cuba and perform this in 1927, they accepted and while they were performing in Cuba, John Ringling from Ringling Brothers Circus saw him and offered them a job and brought them to the circus in New York City to perform at Madison Square Garden. When they performed there, when they showed up to perform, apparently their netting for underneath them, their security netting, didn't show up and they decided to go on without it and the very first performance people were so amazed that they got a standing ovation they refused to quit the ovation until the Willendas went back up and did another act, which was apparently the only time in Ringling Brothers history that's ever happened. Now the group had a very successful career and continued performing with Ringling Brothers and during the time, you know, the 20s and early 30s, it was it was a lucrative business and eventually in 1935 the woman on top helen the beautiful woman that was on top of the four person act her and carl got married and then they had children and their children became melendas they should name the freaking street after them so right over here was their historic home and this is so amazing because they do have a historical plaque right out front and there's a lot of cool history to this place. I can't wait to share it with you. Pretty big house. It says on here, after the 1928 circus season, Carl Walenda, the Walendas came to Sarasota winter location for the Ringling Circus and rented a home. 1937, Carl and Helen who married purchased a home here. The Walenda's property, which included several adjoining lots, became a practice area and provided a place for their colleagues to rest and socialize. The Walenda's toured with the Ringling Circus until 1946. In 1947, the family founded the Traveling Walenda Circus. Thereafter, they expanded their repertoire, and from 1947 to 62, their prime act was the Seven Person Pyramid. In the late 70s, NBC television crews descended on the Walendas' home to film a movie about the Walendas. The special, The Great Walendas, aired in February of 1978 and increased interest in the Walendas and their act. 
In March of 1978, Carl Walenda fell to his death in San Juan, Puerto Rico while walking the high wire. Shortly thereafter, Helen sold the property on Arlington Street and moved northeast Sarasota. The Walenda family symbolizes the ideal that the show must go on and their daring and showmanship made them one of the greatest acts in circus history. So what an interesting story. So that's what I thought was just amazing. You see all this parking area over here. That was actually their rehearsal area. From what I understand, over four generations lived here and practiced here. They set up all their rigging and their platforms and their tight ropes and everything here and they would practice here. Now I mentioned in the plaque that during, it was actually after World War II, that the circus industry kind of dried up a little bit and that's why he created his own circus and in order to try and launch that circus that's when he came up with changing it from a four person pyramid to a seven person and the seven person it would have four people on the bottom with all having 30 pound balancing rods and then it would have two people above that and one above that and they actually experimented with doubling the four, having it eight. And there's footage of them successfully doing it here where they actually had an eight person pyramid, but Carl himself felt like it was maybe a little too dangerous. And as you read in there, there was, they had a travesty in 1962 in Detroit at the Shrine Circus where um, they were trying to do the seven person pyramid and it actually fell and they didn't do the act for decades. And then in 1998, they filmed a documentary of the family still being here. Um, it was, uh, I believe, Tino Walenda lived in the house and Delilah lived in this house. And every day at four o'clock, they would get together and they would rehearse. Mario, who was one of Carl's sons, who fell and actually survived in that 1962 crash. He was um, confined to a wheelchair. He actually went to see them successfully bring the seven person pyramid back in 1998. But what a historical place this was. That would have probably been where they held all of their equipment in the off season. Man, and then at the very top of the house, I noticed there's a, a blue placard that says Carl Walenda, just like if if you were in Britain, the way they do on the houses there. The Walendas never quit performing. Even after that, they continued to perform. And years after, Carl Walenda would be interviewed and he would say he, you know, he didn't feel guilty about the fall, that, that anything could have happened, that somebody could have had a heart attack while they were up there. And we would just never know. And that was just always part of it with them not performing with safety nets their entire career. Is like they felt like you could die just as easily with a safety net as without. And just notice that actually both sides of the sign have some of the history. So the side that we haven't seen yet says the Willenda Circus Troupe originated in Germany where its members developed a daring high wire act early in their careers. They achieved some fame touring with different circuses in Europe, but Carl Willenda became convinced that circus operators in Europe failed to appreciate his artistry. Carl, Herman Willenda, Helen Kreis, and Joe Geiger, Joe Greger, signed with the Santo and Artigas Circus in Cuba in 1927. In 1928, John Ringling observed the Walendas' performance in Cuba and signed them to a contract with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. The Walendas' first engagement with the Ringling Circus occurred at Madison Square Garden in New York. On April 5, 1928, the troupe billed as Europe's latest sensation was honored as a solo act. The performance was a tremendous success and the Walendas became celebrities. The Walenda's fame, showmanship, and daring skill ensured them a prominent place in Ringling Circus, and they continued touring with the circus during the season, which ran approximately from April to October. And as I was going to say, they never quit ever performing, and I actually saw Nick Walenda two years ago, so I'm going to put his performance at the end of this video. But now I want to head out to the cemetery where all of the Walendas are buried. So the cemetery we're going to is about 25 minutes away from the house. And here we are at Minnesota Memorial Park. Not Minnesota, Minnesota.
I have no idea where I'm going. I'm just looking for the section that says the Willendas. All right, I did find a headstone pretty much all the way in the back. If you go all the way to the back where the, uh, the center road takes you by the wall crypts and the road is over here, then they're right here. There's another one right over here that has the family name on it as well. So there you can see the headstone that says the Walendas. Here we have Mario and Linda. Mario is the son of Carl, who I told you um, fell in that 1962 Detroit accident. He was the one that was paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair, but his, I believe it was his kids that ended up being the ones that went back in 98 to the same spot in Detroit where the accident happened and they redid the seven man pyramid or seven person pyramid, recreated it to kind of, in their way, to kind of release the, the bad vibes of the curse. And then over here, we have the Willendas, Aerialist Supreme. Somebody put like a magician's hat with gloves planter. If you come back behind the two that we just looked at, that's Mario. A very filthy kind of headstone here, but this is this is Helen and Carl. Carl was the founder of the troop. He was the patriarch and the kids would say he was <laughs> he, he was a, a slave driver in a good way. They said, you know, he just wanted everybody to be their best and the uh or his son would say we used to sometimes jokingly but sometimes not really jokingly refer to him as god because there was a right way of doing things a wrong way of doing things and carl's way and you always had to do it carl's way carl was the one that ran the the group his entire life and as we saw at the house, he passed away actually performing. Helen was interesting because Helen was the first pretty girl on top that sat up in the chair. Basically what they would do is the, when it was the four piece, they would have, they would uh, walk across and she would be on a chair above them. They would be holding her. And then halfway across the 25 foot wire, she would stand up on the chair. And that was like the big thing. And then when it went to seven people she did it for a while and their kids also were participating but there became a point i believe it was like 1956 carl's brother arthur developed a fear of doing the act and he just went and told him i don't want to do it anymore and carl just couldn't believe it he just couldn't believe that that he wouldn't want that thrill and that he would drop out and then about a year later helen had the exact same thing where she also had developed a fear of doing the act and she also quit the act and she would go to the shows but she said she would never watch the act performed she could always just she knew by the music cues and the audience reaction when everything was happening and then they're right there mario senior here mario jr is here Though they were considered experts of this act, there was always the, there was always something that could possibly go wrong because even a muscle twitch would throw off the balance on that seven person, three tier high pyramid. And it was sad that at one point, Carl's brother would fall and die from the act. Um, and then they would have, I think a year later, the rigging came loose and they all four fell, but luckily none of them had any serious injuries and then several years later um i think it was uh gunther gunther willenda's wife was doing the act and she fell to her death and then in 1962 of course the four of them fell and two of them perished there as well now here's a headstone it doesn't have anybody on the other side but it's the willenda name grotenfen and chris and Chris was, that was Helen's maiden name, so I'm not sure who this was. But I did notice 
over here we were looking at the all the headstones over here over here is Carl's brother Herman yeah right over here is Herman Willenda he's actually very important because he you notice he was born same time as Carl they both were the original first four and so when the accident happened in 1962 if I'm not mistaken it was Herman's daughter I think was the very top she he, she was the beautiful girl on top and when they fell it was it was uh, Dieter Dieter Willenda I'm not sure if he's buried out here or not we'll keep looking Dieter Willenda um, was the one that shouted out that he couldn't hold it any longer and when they fell Carl grabbed the tightrope with one hand and Jenna who was on top uh, grabbed her with the other hand and Herman was also there and he grabbed the tightrope so the three of them were up there dangling until they got a tumbling mat that Jenna could jump down to see he lived till 1985 so right here in front of Herman's grave is Gunther Gunther Willenda Gunther Willenda apparently helped rescue several people during the Hartford Circus Fire on July 6, 1944. And he was one of the only left standing when the Seven Man Pyramid fell. You know what's crazy is that when they had accidents previous to this and his wife perished, they went on performing right after, right after they fell, right after she fell. They went on and performed because Gunther said the people paid their money. They had to see a performance. The show must go on. Okay, and then bringing us back over to where the main group of Olendas, where Carl is, right beside Mario, I didn't realize, Richard uh, Fonan. This was Carl's daughter, Jenny. Jenny and her husband. Richard Dick they were also performers they would say in the family that they were pretty much taught to walk on the high rope or the high wire before they were allowed to walk on ground and Dick was one of the performers that fell to his death in 1962 in that Detroit accident Jenny actually said that the way she found out was she went to the hospital and some news reporter walked in and she overheard her say, where's the wife of the guy that just fell and died? The performer that fell and died. And she attacked the reporter. That's a hell of a way to find out, isn't it? And then right here between Mario Jr. and Carl and Helen was Rita Grotenfend. And Rita was married to Carl's half brother and she was also a performer. She fell to her death from a 50-foot sway pole during 1963 performance in Omaha, Nebraska. So just a year later after the Detroit accident. So pretty much everybody in this whole section that's around them was uh, in the family. So right beside Richard and Jenny was Chico. Chico was also a son-in-law of Carl Walenda and he was part of the troupe and he accidentally died in 1972 by touching a live wire in the rigging. So I assume that electrocuted him. Whew. I was wondering where Dieter was. I didn't know his last name was Shep, but this, since it's covered up with grass, which we will clear off, that is Dieter Shep. He was sadly, unfortunately, this was only his second time performing in front of people with the group. He had joined the group and I believe it was Jenny that said when she watched him perform, she noticed that he kept his hands too low where he held the balancing bar. And she had told him, you can't keep your hands that low. You're going to throw us off balance and the whole thing will fall. And, and she had seen that in rehearsal. So I guess the night that they performed and had the accident, he had a cold and he had told Carl that he did. And they had someone there that could have replaced him, somebody that was even more qualified, it sounds like. But he told Carl he wanted to perform. And it was him that was just literally steps away from being in the safe zone on the platform where he 
shouted out that he couldn't hold it any longer and he lost his balance and the whole thing came down. <sighs> Sad. Then right over here beside her parents, I didn't almost didn't notice it because it's small little like temporary broken up headstone. Right below Chico is Carla, the daughter of Carl. I believe Carla was his first child. Yeah, 1936. So they would have had her when they moved into the house that we saw. Like I said, Melendas are still performing to this day. And let me show you. All right, it's time for Blake Melenda. He's starting over here by the tents. You can see right here. There he goes. As I said before, I'm an eighth generation perfect performer. My family's been doing this for over 200 years. A lot of the He's going up a 30 foot high tightrope. Oh, look at that. Just took his hat off, even. He's trying to walk his way over to here. That perch. Oh, 10 more feet. Yes. Wow. What a historic family. Generations of tightrope walkers. Just to give you a little perspective. I'm zoomed in right now, but look. He's gonna walk all the way across. It's like the length of a half a football field. Ancestors of mine fall and perish from accident. And if you notice, if he were to fall, he'd fall right. They have like posts and a fence right there. He'd fall right there. That fell in Sarasota during the rehearsal, where we oh, were wow. breaking the world records for the highest and the furthest eight person pyramid, where we actually stacked people in a pyramid on the wire. He said they fell two years ago. When we performed, so a lot of them had life-threatening, debilitating injuries, but luckily, God willing, everybody made full recoveries and were able to return to the wire. I did not fall, but I did catch. I received some head trauma as their poles and balancing apparatus is fell and bombarded me as I was going down. I do a lay down for you guys. It's a little slippery right here. Wow. Oh, holy smoke. Let's lay down on the job right I'm gonna have to run over and get a side angle here in a second. Let's see how he gets back up. Okay. There he is. How scary is that? It's from the jump. It's kind of like fish kebabs. He's close. He's almost there. Unbelievable. Woo! All right. Now he says he's going to go this back. Down without oh boy. Injuring anybody. If everybody could keep clear for a second. All right. You he said he's going to work his way back. Now. This one's designed to slow down the balance factor. It has weights at the end of it. 
to over 24 feet long and 55 pounds. If anybody's taking photos or videos today, I just ask if you could please tag them, tag me on Instagram or the Bay Area Renaissance Festival so I can see what you guys come up with. You know, it sounds kind of crazy, but I never get to see myself on the wire. I have two patrons that were here yesterday who actually brought in prints of me on the wire. I was very happy to get that and very grateful. I performed in a renaissance festival. Unfortunately, because of the coronavirus shutdowns and COVID, I haven't performed in a circus for over two years. The last time I performed, I did the first skywalk in Hawaiian history between two towers, 300 feet high and 200 feet across in Ala Moana. A volunteer with a sword come out and stand under me while I do this next trick. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could hear it for Steve the Joust Marshal, the Night Marshal. Could I toss this to you first? Thank you. Get that sword up here, I need it for the trick. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. oh. All right, folks. This headstand on the wire is extremely painful and difficult. There's probably one or two other people doing this in the world today. I actually pulled the world record for the longest headstand up high. That's the last piece of clothes that's coming off. Oof. Man, that hurts. I can actually feel the contour of the cable in my head. Now, if you guys want to check it out whenever I come back down. Thanks, Steve. I have to turn around, get back up that way for my final trick. This table is somewhat of a marathon as far as it goes. The first day I did the walk for this performance, I had to sit down for an hour because it took so much out of me, as well as adrenaline rush. Even with all the extensive training and the hefty load of setup, grabbing all the stakes, carrying all the holes, pulling it all up, pulleys and cantilevers. Still seem to get tired. Get up there. Yeah. I actually built this myself too. Doing something with the chair. Are you guys ready? This stuff's not easy up here. I need to hear you go crazy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I hope you appreciate my choice of music for this. This song just kind of puts me in the mood to do anything crazy. Kind of sucks doing the hardest trick last because that's always when I'm wore out. 
and there seems to be a wasp up here too that's hitching a ride on this chair. Awesome. Uh, run, run, run! Get in there! Oh.